Okay. Hello, Facebook. We should be live on Facebook. I'm very excited for this webinar. I know I say that every time, but this this is uh, something I'm very, very excited about because I'm joined, as you guys can probably tell, by uh, Dr. Keith Blevins and his lovely wife, Alda Munro. And uh, Keith and Valda have been uh, mentors of mine. I would say Keith and Valda have probably been, no, not probably, Keith and Valda have been the biggest influences on, on my own understanding of the principles more than, more than anyone else in, uh, in the, what's known as the 3P community. So I'm, I'm very excited. Um, I'm, I'm actually surprised at myself that I've been running this group for nearly four years now and this is the first time we've we've interviewed you but um but, but very very exciting um i know you can't see everyone but if you guys leave a little comment below i will relay your comments uh, as many as i can or questions to to keith and valda uh so already i can see a whole bunch of people have logged on already uh, richard michael swear I, I don't know if i'm pronouncing your name correctly Richard's saying, can we get a recording? Yes, it's all live streamed in the group and it will be available immediately as soon as this is done, as soon as the uh, live stream is is finished. So uh, I'm, I'm just rambling a little bit to make sure we give everyone time to log on um, and, uh, uh, and make sure that they don't miss any of the start of, uh, <clears throat> and, of the and session. And even though I don't see a record thing, you've taken care of that, right? Like that is correct. There is no <laughs> record button on your side. Okay. This okay. is all live streaming. I can see people are, are saying hello. Uh, Jeanette Elders, thank you for the event. Michael Korsog, hello from Denmark. Uh, Niels, woohoo, so cool. From, from Niels, he's from uh, uh, Holland. So we have people from all around the world tuning in right now, which is very, very cool. And, uh, and and loads of messages coming through. Um, so uh, yes, you can wave. Hello. <laughs> yeah. um, so before, so normally when I when I do one of these webinars, we will will talk for half an hour. I'll ask a bunch of questions about the principles, or about coaching, or um, or things like that. And then, and then we take questions. And today, I, I want it to be slightly different because, um, as, as I said in my post um, a few days ago to advertise this event, uh, we spent some time together. I, I flew over to Lacona, which was, which was wonderful. And I spent some time with, with both, both of you. And <clears throat> the first day... We pretty much only talked about one topic for most of the day, and that was grounding. And it was one of those things that I thought, well, I kind of know what ground, like, why would we be talking about that? I know what grounding is. I had a certain view of grounding. I've still got my notebook uh, over here somewhere where I uh, drew a little diagram and everything. And, and uh, I can't remember if it was Keith or Valda went, no, that's not how it works. And and it was it was massive. It was such a big thing, and I think it has huge implications for coaches. It has huge implications uh, for for all of us in this group. So I'm very excited. Number one, to to share it with everyone, and number two, for me to have a recording as well because we didn't record the conversation in Laconor, and so when I've been looking to explain it to people, it's great to have something to refer to over there. <clears throat> now I've done a lot of talking there. But before I before I jump in and start, can um, some people might not know who who you both are? So can I? I haven't asked you for a bio, but can I do a little bit of a very brief introduction, and you guys tell me if uh, yeah. I've missed something out, and you, and and add to this. So yeah, We'd lo I'd love it. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Keith, you're a clinical psychologist. Yes. Um, and um, you met Sydney Banks many, many years ago, I think in the early 70s. I believe you were the third psychologist to meet Sydney Banks. Uh, as far as I know from the history, there was Roger Mills 
and then Roger brought George over, and then and then George brought you over. So it was kind of like one by one, you you followed each other, th- looking into what what this guy was doing up on Salt Spring Island. Is that correct? Well, um, uh, yes, uh, somewhat. Uh, actually, to to call someone a psychologist, they need to be licensed uh, to practice psychology. And the only person that I'm aware of that that was that before me was John Enright, who was uh, George's partner in another or, another organization. So I think John Enright was the first. And I was the second, technically, in terms of someone you could actually call a psychologist. And neither Roger nor George had that particular licensure or designation um, uh, in, in their careers. But so, but yes, uh, very early on. Close enough. Yeah, there, there may have been uh, there may have been others prior. I, I don't really know. Uh, but there, you know, very early on, I was one of the uh, lucky ones to um, meet Sid and uh, and Veld and I. Um, uh, uh, that that kind of co-occurred because uh, I I sort of uh, I, I went up to uh, Salt Spring Island, which was in Canada, and because um, I had heard about uh, him and listened to a recording of his, and um, uh, it, I was intrigued, and I and Velda. Uh, came uh, came with me because uh, she was um, she didn't want to be left without a car, which is uh, kind of a funny story. But uh, we won't have time for that. But yes, uh, that's uh, I was among the very first psychologist. And and <clears throat> Valda is your wonderful wife, and and I believe Dickin Bettinger said you you were Keith's teacher all these years, is <laughs> is which I think is a won- wonderful description. Of you, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. Am I? I'm an ordinary person. I don't have any degrees. I was fortunate enough to go hear Sydney Banks talk uh, whenever Keith went up there because I didn't want to be left in uh, this the Bay Area, San Francisco Bay Area, without a car. That was my big inspiration. But it didn't really matter because when I heard Sid speak, I knew that I had encountered something that I had never encountered before, and I was heads up and all ears. And so he mentored us until he uh, passed on, and uh, it was uh, the the best and the worst of everything because he (laughs) was wonderful what he taught us, but it was also hard to find out that a lot of what we thought was true wasn't true. I mean, it was for me. It was confrontational. Maybe other people, that was really easy for them. I don't know. And uh, so and we love to work together, and we, I think we, people tell us we complement each other. Uh, we are very different, so I like that part of it. Uh, we won't be saying exactly the same thing, so mm-hmm. we've got that on our sides. Good, good. <clears throat> and I experienced that firsthand seeing you guys interact which was very refreshing and and, uh, very very welcome Um, there's so much we could talk about and and we've only got an hour and I I really want to focus on this topic of grounding but I want to say one one final thing before we get into the topic which is uh, I, I think important to mention because there are so many three principles teachers and for people like myself who um you know, we weren't around. I wasn't around when when Sid was around. Well, well, I didn't. I wasn't aware of him until after he passed. Um, but but when when Sid was was towards the end of his life, he wanted to make sure that his teachings really lived on um, after him. And I and I know one of the things that he did was he uh, he gave some words to. And again, correct me if I'm wrong, but some some words a book to both of you. And and uh, and said, I, I want you to write a book. And he had not done that uh, ever. He, he he had never let anyone use his words in a book. But he kind of entrusted that to you um, to to make sure that his his message and and legacy kind of carried on after his death. I would say he gave us writings that he had that he had plans for. 
but he realized that he wasn't most likely going to live that long, so he wanted to get that taken care of before he died. And so, it, so what he recommended that we turn it into more of an interview type format. So I, uh, we redesigned it uh, together with him and made it uh, fit that sort of format. So we're we have that now. We're working on it. We're uh, uh, we're learning about how to get that uh, you know, formatted and communicated, uh, and, and a big portion of it is uh, that piece of his right. It's all his writings, but in an interview format that um, is quite refreshing and and in very interesting to read and, and draw from. So we're looking forward to sharing it with um, with many many people. Excellent. So the. To, to me, the, the kind of purpose of that background is basically you guys have been around for a very long time. Uh, you, you met Sid, you were mentored by Sid, and, and even towards the end of his life, you know, you, you were people that he, he very intimately trusted to take on his message in the, in the world. Yes. So, so let's talk about grounding, and, and, I, and, and this is kind of the juicy topic I wanted to discuss today. Um, I I was told uh, that uh, when I first came across the principles, it's all a grounding issue. Um, I, I remember speaking to a, a 3P coach and uh, there was a seminar and almost every question that was asked of him, he's like, it's a grounding issue, it's a grounding issue. And, um, and, then, and then after that, I know other people I've spoken to in the community uh, um, and even people I've interviewed for this group have talked about the importance of grounding and the importance of grounding in your in your coaching practice and in and the impact you have with clients. And and it in some ways it made a lot of sense. Um, I could see that the deeper I understood the principles, the more impactful I seemed to be with other people and, and the better my life seemed to be. Um, I also saw it wasn't all that potentially that I felt that was um, I felt like if I only went and, and looked at the principles and didn't do anything else, then I was pro perhaps missing out on some practical things around coaching and, and how to impact people. Um, but I still kind of believe that there were levels of grounding that, you know, you, you, you kind of start off and then, and then the longer you're around the principles and the more insights you have, you, you kind of get deeper and deeper and deeper and, and the deeper you're grounding, the less that you get caught out, and the less that you get caught out, um, the better your life is. And and you guys really challenged that on day one. And it was one of those things that I thought was un you know, it it wasn't up for being challenged. It was like, well, no, no, this 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 one's pretty like concrete. Like this this right, like right? There's, there's there's nothing to challenge here this this is how we all think right like there's you get more grounded and the more grounded you get the less caught out you you are and and um so i won't say more I, tell tell the group tell everyone a little bit more about what you said to me and 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 how i was off base <laughs> well uh i i think i think we all uh uh, for us, uh, so we've been around the principles, teaching the principles for 40 years, and a, a significant portion of those of that time, we too uh, kind of a, a, a accepted the idea, that idea that the more you understand, the more you understand the principles, the better off you are, and 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 uh, and that that was clear, but that became like for us, for me, I say for me became like a point and not unlike what you're saying that um, that's what you need you got to have more of that you got if you got if you got more of that then you're all good and so there was something that kind of innocently became that that the principles became about that and when we started to re re actually bef before Sid awarded us this book uh, we had begun to um, Test our own thinking about it, and uh, and and Sid really got excited about it. It may be may have been one of the reasons why he uh, wanted to give it uh, give it to us, um, because because he could see that 
we were penetrating into something maybe core, more core about the principles than about what we do with the principles or uh, the effect of the principles. But what are the principles it's themselves, just to say it in some way. And so this, what, what began to happen for us is we started to see that there was a, a problem with splitting the principles, that when we split a principle, we don't have a principle anymore. We have uh, a part uh, a part principle, part not principle. And uh, and that further led us to, to look further at everything he had been teaching, and we realized that he was very clear about this, that only the ego, only the illusion of the ego creates a split, that, that, that this split was not really true uh, and 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 but when assumed to be true as is often the case um, what happens is people make something up to do and and if you study Sid Banks you you will realize over and over and over again he stood he stood firm and tall and uh, relentless about there's nothing to do and that was a striking um, aspect of, of his uh, of his insight and his uh, and what he had to say about his insight throughout all the years that he taught that there was nothing to do and he was quite you know we were you you listen to it he'll talk about uh, the ramifications for meditation or or uh, or, or a, 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 any number of other things but that core uh, splitting, and we started to see that that where where does this split, where does this uh, illusory split? There there is an illusionary split between the spiritual and the physical. But practically speaking, how does that get made manifest in in human in the human endeavor in the human experience? And it, 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 it started to show itself that, that it, it happens very early on in our moment-to-moment -moment experience when feeling becomes split from thought. So it looks like our feeling has, uh, has, a, has something that thought is not included with all of our feeling. And Sid was very clear about that uh, all the way through that feeling was was not separate from thought and that we were not separate from the principles and so that was the thing that we started to talk about and as soon as you have a split then you have a grounding phenomena wherein you you need to get more more grounding and Sid was very clear I remember him saying once um, uh, someone said well where do I go to get training I remember this and he said uh, it was in a group, and he said, "You don't need training." And it was like, "Oh, uh, we had all assumed that training was a requirement, um, more training, uh, because we came from a training model. Uh, we came from a getting more, getting more understanding uh, presumption." But he wasn't talking about. He would not talk about that. He would. He was adamant about the fact of the principles were not uh, there was an illusion illusionary separation between the spiritual and the physical but it was not a fact and that that illusion was an ego illusion and that was a core problem for hum humanity and that the principles revealed to him the the uh, the oneness uh, uh, and the um, inseparability as fact and if you start there and keep to there we started to realize that was a paradigm breakthrough that we wanted to, that we started to talk about it as a paradigm as a whole paradigm as a as a true the, the true paradigm for our psychological functioning and without principles there's really no paradigm with principles we now have the uh, clarity and precision and um, um, uh, discriminator of a single paradigm.
Yeah. So, so Keith, just just to kind of jump in there because I want to make sure people are, are are following what you're saying, and and it can be quite easy to 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 perhaps lose what, what you're saying when you're talking about splitting because it took me a little bit of time to get my head around that um and and again can i i'll i'll paraphrase and then tell me tell me if i'm if i'm not uh, if i'm not not on point but what i understood was that there there are these three principles mind thought and consciousness and and so as principles they're complete and whole and 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 like you say unsplittable uh you, you know they're they're a complete separate thing if you like and and what what you guys had been doing what everyone had been doing in the 3p community was separating out going smaller than a principle in terms of kind of quality of thinking or uh, high moods or low moods or levels of consciousness or you know think splitting out a principle into into kind of smaller units and and I, I believe what what you're saying is, well, it, you can teach that you can teach types of thinking you can, but but that's not teaching principles or that's not coming from a principles understanding. And when you look at things from a from a principle pl- understanding, then then that is what moves this from being the same as so many other teachings where people talk about the idea of thoughts and feelings being connected but they don't talk about it as a principle and when you look at it as a principle there are implications to that i.e that this is a complete paradigm shift in in the way we understand the mind uh, am i explaining that correctly yes i i would like to say that it, as it turned out and it took me quite some time to realize oh sydney's putting things back together Things that we had just, um, humanity had split apart because we would think of thought and feeling. We would think of thought as in our head and feeling as in our heart. We even had it split in the body somehow. And uh, it was actually, uh, for thought to be a complete uh, vehicle of communication, uh, it would have to have the thought and the feeling both. That's why we have to do LOL and we have to have all our emojis when we type things out. Otherwise, people don't know what we mean. Uh, so they, they, they had to put it back together, too. And then Sid also, as a principle, it was, it was not different types of thought. It was all thought. And so he, he took all these different ideas and he put them back together in one. And when, and when I saw it, I thought, oh... I only have to keep up with one bouncing ball here instead of, well, I could say three, mind, thought, and consciousness. But most people, the first thing they would do was split split mind into good thinking, bad thinking, and teach through that. And now people have got two different things to think about. And he was trying to talk about the thing as a whole. He was trying to get things incorporated back together so they could be simpler, so they could be understood in their, their whole power. And I think he was attesting to that. He wasn't really, to be even more precise, mm-hmm. he wasn't trying to put them back together. He knew, he saw, he realized they were already together. And they could not be separated. Separated, But this separ- separation, this false separation, was a, was a product of egotism. But when he talked about consciousness, for example, uh, here's a quote from him about consciousness. Quote, I'm not talking about the form our level of consciousness has led us to, such as a bad marriage or an unhappy life or a happy life. I'm talking about consciousness as a spiritual neutral power before human experience. So when he included that principle of consciousness, it blew up the uh, all the separate Uh, strivings and doings and wantings and trying to be uh, somewhere more somewhere else spiritually it took that illusion away of separation and it revealed uh, and 
and it turns out there's so many practices and processes and procedures and schools uh, of all trying to put things back together that were never separate in the first place. And that was a paradigmatic claim that he made and and we we uh, you know we 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 uh, we support because it's uh it and it's different so when we talk in our, in our programs and such you i uh, i you know I, I would be surprised if people could find us ever talking about something to do and i think that's uh now we never really bring that up that we're not going to do that it's just kind of built into the way we see things now and the way we teach, but it's uh, but but that has eliminated a lot of like higher thinking, uh, better thinking, healthier thinking, unhealthy thinking, uh, higher levels of consciousness, lower levels of consciousness, um, um, uh, positive uh, feeling, negative feeling, all those sorts of discriminators we've realized are not really to the point of the principles. So keeping the principles whole is, uh, is something we're doing and, and we're, we're finding a, 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 a kind of regeneration or, or a rebirth of, of how the principles, what the principles bring to humanity. So, so Valda, uh, you know, you, you were saying, um, I can't remember Connor or an email that, um, as a result of not splitting and, and, and kind of what I wanted to pull out of this interview and this webinar was that the grounding occurs, it's not a doing. Could, could you talk a bit more about that? Well, if, if you think of grounding as doing, it seems that you're assuming that you are uh, capable of making yourself have insight. And I think insight is something that happens to us, and I'm extremely grateful, but I don't know how to make it happen. If I did, I would have a lot more of them, and so would everybody else. If we honestly had that power to, you know, say, okay, now I'm going to, you know, I'm going to have one right now, <laughs> but it just doesn't end up working out like that. And uh, it, it teaches you a tremendous amount about patience and gratitude and all these other things, because... It's not insight on demand or insight on tap. Uh, it's insight when it happens. And so I just couldn't ever, I didn't want to take responsibility uh, for people thinking I was making myself having insights because I don't think anybody knows how to do that. Uh, so I, I thought, well, we should at least be honest about that with people. Uh, and I also wanted to say, it's like, from the minute you split a principle into two different things, the um, uh, good thinking, bad thinking, uh, you immediately want to try to do the good thinking and not do the bad thinking. So you, on your own, <laughs> in your own home, create the duality that can exist in that, that is so, that really puts so much on your mind, so much thinking on your mind, because you're having to decide, well, which is the good and which is the bad, or which is the uh, um, uh, impersonal and which is the personal and which is the spiritual and which is the not spiritual. And it just goes on and on and on. And it, it doesn't, uh, given that so many people do split it to teach it, uh, it doesn't look like it is such a problematic thing, but it is an extremely problematic thing. And as you start to get your principle back whole again and, and, and you start to think of it as whole, that doing just disappears. You don't have it split, so you don't have something immediately to do. And it wasn't that we tried to quit teaching doing. Without the split, there was no doing to teach. And we were extremely surprised, and we quit getting the question from groups of, well, how do we do this? How do I do this? Uh, and we were just completely, that was something that we had always had before. And for the first time, we didn't have those questions anymore. It was, it was great. I thought, well, I think we're getting more on point here. And the other thing that people began to report and we began to notice is there was a lot, our minds got oh. 
noticeably, significantly quieter and quieter because it was a lot less tempting to think about things that were um, d where, wherein there was a, a division, a separation built into the thinking we were thinking, that separation now being revealed as illusionary, uh, it, uh, it, it was a, a kind of a, a deeper discriminator and a lot of things that we thought were relevant to the principles and we were trying to, to do, trying to be good principle practitioners, you might say, but fell away and, and that quieter mind that Sid always talked about and, and the experience of that, the feeling of that quieter mind, which he uh, routinely talked about, but it was a product, not a, uh, not a, uh, not a doing. So, and again, he would talk about that. He would say, "I'm looking. Yeah, you're looking for a quieter mind, but I'm not recommending you go learn meditation." For example, he said, "Any technique, anything to do, is saying that it's not inside." And I'm telling you right now, it is inside. It's all inside. It's not outside. One of the, my favorite quotes of his was, there's nothing outside that can help you. There's nothing outside that can hurt you because there is no outside. And that, you listen to that and you think about that, it, it removes something that has been uh, a nemesis or a, um, a temptation to think in terms of more and more and more. And the effect of that is a quieter mind. Again, and you would you might call that deeper grounding, but to say grounding, and I'm getting deeper grounding, tends to uh, promote egotism. Well, because it's like you're doing it. So I, I, I remember drawing a diagram. Let's see if I can get this right around. So it was something like this, if yeah. you remember. I drew, I drew a diagram, and I've shown it to some people since since I got back from Lacona, and this is what my view of grounding looked like. Yeah. It was over over time, that way, um, right. I would get caught out less and less, and, and, and uh, I'm trying to do this backwards. As, as I went down that way, that meant I was more grounded. So there were kind of different levels here versus here versus here, and and what was really helpful was, and it really looked like that. And I don't know if I'm the only one. I don't know if there's other people in the group that don't see it that way. And it was just me. Well, a lot of people see it. That I remember way. drawing that. I I may have they been one that. among some of the because I was interested in. So I remember way back, forty years ago, drawing that diagram and and seeing the levels, and the achievement of deeper grounding meant uh, less outs less. Uh, less getting fooled by low moods and low levels and the illusion exactly but i think i think one thing you have to consider we started to realize for example was if you think about it um sydney banks as yet unpublished autobiography the title of it is beyond time space and matter so that that graph is on, is based on time and he would often say, you're jumping time. This, this is not a time-based, uh, achievement-based uh, sort of thing. It's a, it's a truth, and it, it, it takes no time to see it. If you're thinking it's going to take you years, don't believe it. it it's, not, it's not based on time. It's not a time-based paradigm. That was really helpful for me to realize. And if you listen to him, I've I found nothing in anything I've ever listened to of Sid, and I, I have researched everything recorded that I that I know of, and I and, and lots of things that people have never heard that were recorded. I've never found anything to be um, dis discontinuous or or or, or, or a betrayal of this. Uh, comprehension of a of a new paradigm. Yeah, and and uh, you know, so 
just to kind of play this back, how this hit me was when I thought, you know, this is kind of how it worked with the principles. I was always looking to get deeper, and and I was always feeling like, well, I'm I'm maybe not as deep as I was, and I need to read another book, and I need to go on another training, I need to do something more in order to deepen my grounding, even if that was, I need to experience life more. And what was really helpful for me, having had the conversation with both of you, was it doesn't work that way. It, it always works inside out, and sometimes you see that and sometimes you don't. And And it's not like, okay, now you have conquered all your misunderstandings around relationships. You're fully grounded, and you're never going to have any outside in misunderstandings around relationships it doesn't work that way and one thing that was really helpful that you said to me Valda was you know you in a certain area of your life you could have like 20 years of no outside in thinking uh, you, or, or, or the illusion of that you could, 20 years of not being caught out and then 20 years later you know for some reason a thought pops in that looks really real to you and and you get caught out and that doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you that's just the nature of the system. And that's been so helpful for me because it's taken judgment of myself off my mind. And and subconsciously, I didn't even realize I was doing it, it's taken judgment of my clients off my mind. Because now I'm not kind of assessing them for what level they're at. And, you know, if, if, if they're getting caught out a lot, well, well, they haven't got it. Okay, we need to do some more work here versus... Um, actually just having loving compassion for them because that's that's the nature of the system you know take something out that striving and 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 again uh one of the things that that stood out and you and and all these coaches that are on this call or people that want to help people you ask yourself the, the, when you're talking to p groups of people or individuals are you hearing questions that are kind of, I'm just not getting this, I'm trying, I've been reading, I've been studying, but you know, I still get caught in low moods, um, and, and there's a certain sense of striving and dissatisfaction, and what's wrong with me, and I need more, I, I need more, I need something more, please help me, Does that, if that's a common theme, or it's ever brought up, that's a diagnostic, not about what's up with them, but it's about what you're communicating. You're communicating something to them that has that in it. And we do not get that question anymore. I'm not saying we're bad or anything, but, but that question has disappeared from our audiences and, and our clients. And they're not thinking, because we weren't, we didn't realize, but we were, we were caught in that same striving, more understanding, deeper, deeper level, more consciousness, more con we are kind of more consciousness greedy and, and more consciousness needy, thinking that, that that was going to deliver what we were now missing. And so it set up a, an egotism, and the principles are the, are a, an, 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 the antithesis of ego. They destroy ego. They supersede ego. And... That's really what um, the principles have to offer you and your clients. And that question will undoubtedly disappear. Because it's not, it's based on, uh, it's tempting to think that way. When you, when you hear and believe and, and are taught, we've been teaching striving for better thinking, striving for, for, for better levels, as if, that's possible, or as if that's uh, um, of the problem. That in it comes from those kinds of things that you you heard early on. You need better grounding. You need better grounding. You need better grounding. It, it, it's it became like a pat answer to a problem that was that that's not really the problem. I, I would love to hear. Kind of, we 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 haven't got a lot of time. I wish we had three hours or something but i'd love to hear from the group how this is landing so i can see a few few comments coming through 
uh, you know, Jesse Lynn saying this conversation is fabulous, but I, I really love to hear how people are hearing this and, and is this making sense? Uh, because, because if you are, you're getting it quicker than I did. It, it took me, it took me many hours to really get it, but I'm, I'm hoping we can, we can get something across in this conversation, which would have been really helpful for me to hear many years ago or, 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 or even six months ago. Um, because there was still that that inbuilt levels which led to self judgment and and teaching or coaching in a certain way, and and this has made my 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 coaching so much simpler. It's made my own life simpler. I was telling Keith and Valda before this call how I'd been caught out over something in the in the last twenty four hours, and and it was really helpful to not add to that being caught out the judgment of I should know better. I've been learning about the principles now for over six years. I should have a certain level of grounding now. It, it takes all of that away and it makes Sid's words, to me at least, it makes Sid's words make more sense when he used to say, you, you know, um, this, this can happen in an instant. And I was like, come on, yeah, that happened for Sid, but that, that's not for the rest of us. Because again, if because I had this whole concept of, of, of of grounding being like this level thing over time and, and a doing. Uh, Mate is saying, awesome, we are here already. Jesse Lynn says, it makes sense, sort of. I missed the beginning and we'll go back and listen to this many more times. Thank you at least for your for, for your honesty. If, if there's anyone listening to this and it doesn't make sense, please do ask the question because uh, uh, Keith and Valder and I had a lot of back and forth over several hours to to try and get to grips with what was actually being said and and you know i was kind of drawing little diagrams to uh to try and comprehend you know where we were both you know uh coming from mary saying i do feel i have more insights when i read or consume materials and this feels at odds with the concept of something to do a any comments on this well i think i mean Go ahead. I, I, I think when you read truthful things, uh, meaningful things, and they 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 touch you, there there is a a, a, a reminder, uh, uh, but it's it, it it's not or, or you or you hear someone uh, speaking truthful things, you it uh, it's not it's not like that's not. Um, that doesn't happen, but it's the impact of that because because we all know that that happens without doing that as well. Uh, you could take a walk, or you could be just driving your car, and uh, you, 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 the and, and I think taking away the stimulus as a cause and the impact as a product. And getting it, uh, see that there is duality in that. There's um, there's a separation in that, and it's just less tempting to believe in that when you see how this works inside out. You're you're a you're a responsive uh, experiencer of the beauty of God's kingdom or the the nature of of, of, of one 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 truth and. Uh, and nothing can stand in the way of that. Uh, even uh, not this not to not to say that um, truthful things heard isn't a, isn't impactful, but it's not encapsulated. That's not where the effect is coming from. It's coming from you responding to. Your mental life. Your mental life is giving you your own experience of the truth. And and I could say Keith and I are so very different. He's more of a studier. He's a reader. I'm dyslexic. I'm not a reader. I've never been drawn to reading. Um, and and I I just don't. He listens to uh, uh, CDs a lot more than I do. Sid stuff. And. Uh, it, this is who we both sort of naturally are, and I'm glad that we're not at odds with one another about it. 
that me thinking, oh, what's the matter with him? Or him thinking, oh, what's the matter with her? Yeah. Because we stay fairly well. Uh, we Nobody's gone way ahead of anybody else here. And we can both see that and feel it in our conversations. So I think you you do what works well for you. He does more planning about his talks than I do. Uh, I used to have attitude about it. I don't. I thought, hey, look, we're you know, this is this is a world of people being different, and uh, if that works for him, great. I I, I will add that I I've loved reading three P books. Uh, I, I share books and resources with my clients, and one thing that I've that shifted for me in the last uh, couple of months has been, and I'm, I'm seeing this more and more, is that, you know what, sometimes that can have the opposite effect that I want it to have, mm -hmm. because it's not, in, insights aren't coming from the books or the resources, they, they can be a great pointer, and they can be a great inhibitor, because it's not, it's not, it's not the book. Um, and uh, and that's certainly something that that, that I've seen. Well, this different point of how does this work? If if you have in your idea of what's going on here, thought in the moment included, uh, it, it, it's it's such a definitive thing. Uh, me, it's like, well, why do I feel the way I do? If I don't have thought in the, my thought in the moment included, I, I do not have a correct uh, formula. And I, I can go all off anywhere, but but that that to me is a paradigmatic uh, question for a person, and it will it can protect you from what you read and to keep you from going in wrong directions with what you read, which I think is wonderful. Well, well, Mary said, I wonder if I would read or listen less if I weren't trying to get somewhere. I know I would actually. There you go. Right, right. Yeah. So, so, so we've got more. Um, I believe it was Michael. The the comments have gone down the page. So I can't see who who wrote this, but are we always grounded in accordance with our current clarity? Question mark. I I think yes. I mean, you are where you are, and you can wish you were someplace deeper. <laughs> uh, that'll happen when it happens. So. Um, and, and you have to uh, go ahead and be okay with who you are, where you are uh, at some point, because this is not going to get finished. This is not a thing that gets finished. I think and if you listen to Sid, I mean, he would say that over and over again. Like the in, the, the, the uh, endless, uh, he said, levels of consciousness is endless as time itself. So there's no getting, there's no getting there. Getting there. But. I mean, you think, oh, yeah, 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 but I'd like to get there, you know, or I'd like to get further along. But if you start to hear this as you, you know, where you are, like he would say, give up the search. And he would say, uh, you know, essentially say, bloom where you're planted. And uh, uh, don't, uh, don't, you know, listen, listen to your own wisdom. Uh, he, he was very adamant about those things. And I can see now more why he would say that. So because it would curtail so many people that would come to see him would be searchers and they would they would come in searching and they would be around him for a weekend or whatever and then they're they're on to india or they're on to the next book or they're on, on to the next thing and they they couldn't really stop and uh, a few of us did and we were like excuse me say say that again you know like it, it really forced us to quit thinking and quit searching. It's why I try and bring India and the principles together. <laughs> <laughs> but it's really noticeable in, in your own experience of life in yourself when, you're, my, when your thinking slows down or, or calms down, when you get less, uh, you have less on your mind it's such a relief and it's you just can't help but be have gratitude for it because it's like well this feels really good uh it brings a smile to your face but it's not a doing it's it's a it's like 
as I was, if, as I had a new way to look at the principles rather than it being a levels of consciousness game, I thought, well, you're either inside or outside here. And started, I either have thought in the moment included in my experience of life or I do not as to where my feelings are coming from. It was a different way to slice bread or something. And uh, it, it immediately helped me and has it speeded up my learning and has and, and I saw that happen to any of the other people that that went in this direction. And they were cool about it too. And got, I thought me too, you know. We've got loads more questions and we're trying to get as many through as many as we can. Um, Kirsten said the not doing really resonates, but how can I then be of service to someone that is suffering? I'm not sure I understand. Well, the suffering, I mean, you're, you are of service, you can be of service, because the suffering is the, is the, um, is the anxiety that there's something wrong with me, or, or I don't get it, or, or I, I, you know, the, the, it's a self-generated um, um, search in the wrong direction. The search leads you in the wrong direction, so, which, that's a quote I said. But um, you 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 can help people if you under if they understood that that was a, a an ego um, a, a, a thing that you're you're on the path of that that is ir irreconcilable. You'll never get there going that direction. That's a that that's not uh, it's not possible. It's a complete uh, wild goose chase, you might say. And a lot of people are in, involved in it. But um, that 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 would be remarkably helpful to uh, help your people with is help them to give up that that longing, that disenfranchisement, that disconnection, that uh, what's the matter, what's wrong with me, what more do I need? All of that is is uh, uh, creating misery, and you can help them with that. And there is, uh, there's common sense and or logic and wisdom incorporated in the truth of the three principles. So it's a funny thing. Um, when you talk to people, however it is you happen to talk and whatever it is you happen to call it, um, it it's going to be beyond your what you know which is great that there's something beyond what we know. Very encouraging. And um, that you you start to see the power of that wisdom helping people uh, far beyond what you know how to do. So it's, uh, it's not your doing, but you can share with people what's, what you see. And that's as much as you have, and be as honest as you can be about it. When I first started teaching the three principles, I didn't know what to say about consciousness, and I was just honest. I said, I have to tell you, I don't know what to say about consciousness. And you could almost hear the crowd go, oh, like that, because I was honest about it. It seemed like that must have been wrong, but I ended. I was still a very good teacher, and uh, I would say, you'll have to work on that one yourself. I don't know what to say to you. And I still am not, I'm not worth a hoot about it, to tell you the truth. I usually say, oh, let him tell you. Yeah, I, th I think what's shifted for me around that, Kirsten, is that it, it's taken a lot off my mind mm -hmm. and I, I seem to have a lot more compassion for people. Whereas before, when I, when I was seeing grounding differently, um, perhaps there was an element more of me, I need to do something, I need to get this over to you, um, I, I need to help you see things as I see it. Whereas now there's more equality in in someone suffering is the same as me because because I suffer when I go outside in, and and that's the nature of of the principles, and and so it's kind of more from an equal footing and from that place of compassion and not doing, I'm seeming to connect with people more deeply and and being more of service to them. That's what we experienced too. We had no idea that it would be that way. But we experienced it, and I thought, "Oh, this is wonderful." Yeah. I had always wondered how do I, how do I add compassion to myself and respect 
and uh, non-judgment and non-criticalness. How do you know? How do I get those things going on? I couldn't ever figure it out. And this logic and wisdom that exists in this direction took care of it for me. What is a, is a popular teacher uh, of, of levels as being the point uh, said to us when the, uh, they saw us teach to a group that, oh my God, they said, um, there's absolutely no doubt that it's a level playing field. And uh, that's just what you just said. Uh, and Kush and and uh, being 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 that way, then it's uh, there's no striving or needing to get somewhere else, uh, and and it level it, it makes it, it it totally changes the the subject matter of what you're sharing with people. Well, that's an extremely hopeful thing for other people. Yeah. Uh, you feel like you're, you're, you two are all in the same boat. Yeah. So, uh, that's very encouraging to another human being. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Kirsten's responded back and said, wow, that was so helpful and reassuring. Thank you so much. So I think that's really landed for her. Okay. And, and that you talk about, on Chris, that you talk about uh, having less judgment and criticism for yourself and for others and having more compassion for others. These are these are the deeper feelings that Sidney Banks was pointing to, and hoping he's trying to tell people these are the feelings that exist here if you come this direction, and I I mean go figure uh, that by you know that that's come to you you didn't make that happen to you weren't you surprised yeah me too I thought I've always known these were good ideas I'm not stupid you know. I just didn't know how to have that be a reality in my life, and this helps helps that happen for people. And it's subtle. You think if they, if you think more understanding will bring me gratitude, <laughs> then you're you're pushing it away and you're making it be somewhere other than now. And uh, Sid would talk about the now a lot, but you can see now why because it's there isn't any. Um, the, the only distance between you and gratitude is less outside in thinking um, it, it, in your way. Uh, it, the, the life is filled with those feelings. So we've got a few, few comments. I can't, again, I can't see who wrote them now, but uh, someone said, it feels like my ego is fighting to hold on to something that was never real in the first place. Uh, <laughs> and I, and I don't get it, but it's starting to make sense slowly. Uh, someone yeah. else has said, it's amazing. This is about being okay with whatever happens. We are all just human. Just accept what you experience. Uh, someone else said, my ego is really putting up a fight. What I'm trying to, what am I, I'm, I'm, I think it's what am I rather than what I am trying to do as a coach, if this is true, which makes it more likely to be true, LOL. Uh, awesome call. Thank you so much. Someone said, as of now in my life, I've, I'm, I feel I'm more lost than ever. Nothing really draws my attention or interest. I need nothing. Or maybe I need to sit in stillness and embrace whatever comes up, question mark. Be as lighthearted as you can be about it. <laughs> I can say that. I, I, th I just know that this other stuff is built into this. If you go this direction, this is what you're headed for. That's, uh, I don't know how to say that a better way. I wish I did. Um, Do you know how to say it a better way? I think you might. At least they have two ways of saying it. I was seeing our time and I was thinking about, for me, I was thinking about um, that our, our website, um, Three Principles Paradigm, um, has a wealth of materials, of listening materials that are available for people that wanted to learn more about the rigor uh, 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 of uh, of Sydney Banks and and this uh, and this uh, discriminator that we're talking about. So um, uh, you can you know you if you want to hear more about that, um, there's there's plenty of uh, resources there for people. Do you, do you have time for a few more minutes? Oh sure. Yeah. 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 And and if 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 this seems like well now what's the point? 
the fact that you that you're changing is not a bad thing. Uh, you should be changing all along. There should be shaky ground underneath your feet f for the rest of your life. Uh, if if you're gonna if you want to learn something new, and there's just tons of stuff learned. And that was the hardest part for me. Is in the beginning I thought, well, I want I used to have firm ground underneath my feet, and I don't like this. And then at some point I realized, oh, give up on that. That's not gonna that's not gonna be there anymore. And I thought, okay, I can deal with that. I can live with that. I like learning. I like being able to feel my own evolution. Uh, thank you very much. So I think that the ego, the ego will definitely fight against this. But it's it, you're just going to learn something new. That's all that's going on. No bigger deal. You'll And I think if anything, you'll be more and more inspired to share this with people in the best way you can figure out to do that. So my, Michael Fall has a question, and maybe maybe this will be the last one of the night. I have been exploring this for a while. Sid seems to say that insight can't come from an agitated mind. Hence, seek quiet. Could you speak on this? Well, I, I don't think that insight is bound by anything myself. I, I've, I've been... Uh, I, I've been in a, a, a real pisser of a bad mood and uh, literally sitting in the middle of the living room floor cursing about something and then all of a sudden a big a huge insight will hit me and I'll think oh yeah okay uh, and and I, I do think that he, he's pointing to if, if you if you it, it I don't think he means to make a rule he wasn't much of a rule and regulations guy, you know? I mean, if you think about it, in the moment of right prior to the beginning of those three days of profound enlightenment that he uh, went through, uh, he was uh, full of poor me, poor me, poor me, poor me, and arguing for his limitations. And so, uh, the, 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 uh, like, he, he would never say that I ever heard him say, there's a precursor yeah. for you. There's something you have to do. You have to get your mind quiet in order to get insight. You, uh, I don't think he does say that. I think he says the opposite of that. He's saying something uh, different than than you need to set. You need to find something to put yourself in a position to get more, uh, because that's a doing. And and he was not. He was adamant about that. That's so the one thing he was adamant about, and it's the most important thing for human beings to face. Just on that, Niels has said, I always thought it was that he said it's easier for insight to come in a quiet mind, not only from a quiet mind. Well, still, uh, you're hedging a little bit. Like, I, like, like try to get out of the... Um, the idea easier okay then i'll you know i'll i'll i'll, I'll hedge my bets um uh what if he's not talking about that at all um we're we're we realize that to put something in there to that you need to do it, it creates a what we're calling a mixed paradigm that oh yeah, this is a this is a God mind paradigm, but there's a lot of things that we can kind of do to make it better, make it treat us the way we feel like we need to be treated. If that creates ego, I've seen people have insights in any and every uh, way possible. I I'd say just let it rip, be yourself, live your life. Don't always be trying to affect a, a particular feeling or mood or whatever. Uh, be more spontaneous. Uh, and this is where, by the way, this is where the secret line, the, the red line that's on this diagram here, but for all the people that want to teach the principles, if you want an identifying uh, marker or characteristic, this is it. There's no doing. And uh, believe me, 
you go to look, you go to hospital programs, they're going to have mindfulness, they're going to have cognitive behavioral, they're going to have heart math. They all entail doing. And this is because it's a, it's a pre-existing paradigm that is uh, stricken off the table. And that's your selling point. There's no one that's going to, that without the principles as a footing, could say that because they have no reason to, no logic behind them to say that. They feel like there's something that is, that is, uh, has to be done to make me more, uh, more, more, to, to make me belong more than I already belong. And, and one doctor said, to Keith, he said, I'm so glad you told me that. He says I was. He says I was not going to to uh, pay for another program that put any more on my, my employees' plate than they already have. And he says you've just told me this won't put any more on there. And he says I'm intrigued. And and he went for it. In fact, it took things off their plate. That's true. We're, we're getting so many more questions in but uh so this is obviously and i and i and i can relate because like i said we went back and forth on this for a few hours and and we're trying to uh go can i ask one or two more final ones or do you want to we've got the time right now sure we usually Please. work an hour and a half segments anyway sure so, so so michael's gone back and said so it is fatalistic question mark <laughs> Well, it it, uh, it might sound it might sound fatalistic, or it might sound fate, but but fate um, it shows you something about about the nature of things that um, engenders uh, creativity and um, and great respect and great uh, appreciation and, and awe. Uh, once again, some of the a lot of the deeper feelings that you don't get from ego-based uh, doing. So it's uh, it's, it, it's it's inspiring. It's inspiring. That there's a guide in fatal. It's not fatalism, but it's fate has guidance in it and, and wisdom in it that will that will take you deeper and further down uh, down the road without ego. Being your, uh, being what's holding you back. You're going to learn so many things that you didn't know, and they're going to come to you, and you're going to never have heard anybody else say them, and never have read them anywhere. And it just makes you a better teacher and a better helper, and you can feel it. And it's uh, you. You really start to relax about the work that you do. Uh, you get way more used to insight in the moment coming to you. Because this is the direction that it's headed, and you get over being um, desperate for insight. Uh, that's like a thing of the past. It is fatalistic for your ego. It is very fatalistic for your ego. <laughs> Ego's going no, no. <laughs> Neil's had a question, and he said you've already answered it. Um, someone asked a question about how this affects your marriage. For that, I'm going to say, watch the interview that we did a few years ago on the relationship series because we spoke for 45 minutes on how this affects your marriage. So I will, if you can't find that, let me know. I'll, I'll send you the link to that. Um, someone's got a question about how do you deal with physical pain from the inside out because they've got a pain in their lower ab abdomen. Uh -huh. yeah. uh, this helps you... Tr I as I, I, I've been chronically ill for many years, pain is included, it helps me tremendously. Uh, I love that, and, it, and if I am in pain, it to me is not so darned upsetting. I just go put myself to bed. It's like, don't try to do a full day's work when you're already hurting like hell. You, you, your common sense gets better you can treat yourself better. It's like, go take an aspirin, Valda. It's, that's not rocket science, but boy, what a good idea for me. Somebody else, there's, they'll have a different solution. 
but it, uh, and we work with so many uh, uh, clients who have chronic illnesses because they find out about me and then so that's who they want to talk to. Well, well, thank you. We will we will stop it there. We've we've squeezed out an extra ten minutes, which we normally don't do. Uh, so thank you for answering all those questions. I know people are going to have more. Uh, you gave us the website before. Could you give it again if people want to get hold of you? They want to know more about your work, or that maybe they want some training with you. How can they find out all that good stuff? Uh, the website's the easiest way. Uh, there's plenty of information on there. Our our uh, personal emails on there. Three principles, uh, paradigm, three spelled out, principles, paradigm, dot com. And, and like I said, uh, we did an interview with Keith for the relationship series. We then did another one with both Keith and Valda. So those are both available online. I, I highly recommend people watch them. I send them to people myself. Um, a little plug for me. Keith is going to be joining me once again on my immersion in September. So if there's any men interested in that. Uh, via via the internet, I, I fortunate you won't be there in person. Maybe one day, but uh, uh, that's that's another way to get hold of Keith. I I highly recommend both Keith and Valder's work. It's been incredibly useful and helpful to me. Um, they they were the people I was most interested in getting feedback from when I wrote my book back there, um, and I, and I really appreciate it. And I'm and I'm glad you took the time out for all of us. I'm, I hope everybody found it really useful today. So so thank you very much. Yeah, thanks for asking us. This thank, has been thank fun. Thank you. Thank you, Anne Fish. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you all for listening.